The last time we looked at the all NVMe SSD array inside of Unraid, we did a test for the MacBook Pro transferring a single file over to that all NVMe SSD array in my Unraid server, which is aptly called PNAS, that is my test server. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the results in basically part two of doing the same test, but this time from PNAS, my Unraid server, to another Unraid server, Transensia, which is my primary Unraid server that I use pretty much daily for everything. And now we're gonna talk about how all of this stuff is configured and set up, and we'll, so there'll be some pretty charts and graphs and all that stuff to come too. But what you should really know first is PNAS was the receiver of all of the data that we were gonna transfer, and Transensia was the sender. So Transensia and PNAS both have 10 gig NICs and they are connected to a 10 gig switch. Jumbo frames is enabled on all devices so they are able to reach the potential full bandwidth which is really important for this testing because we want to see if we can, how quickly we can transfer the data and consistently we can transfer that data before running into any potential non-trimmed SSD issues that may arise. Now the way that I tested this was by creating a script that would take that video file that I wanted and send it over to the PNAS repeatedly. This file was about 48 to 52 gigabytes depending on what operating system you're looking at. And this would do this between 40 to 50 times. Now, the reason why I say between 40 to 50 times is because initially when we first started testing this script, I had four NVMe SSDs available. But then somewhere maybe after the 11th or 10th run, or sorry, the 11th or 12th run, one of the drives failed completely and I was unable to use that drive in the array because every time it was in there I would get constant errors in that device. So it had to be pulled and thus we went from about 52 uh, transfers to 41 to 42. I don't really exactly remember. But all of this information will be provided in a link. So if you want the exact details of everything, you can check it out on your own. Each run of that script was between 40 to 50 transfers and those runs were recorded to a CSV file that I could later import into Excel and then make some nice pretty charts and graphs with. So I did a total of 22 runs, but unfortunately I lost the first 10 results, leaving me with only runs 11 and 12. And the reason why I lost some of those results is because I was actually storing them in the temp directory, which is actually in RAM. And the server crashed most likely because I was still having that bad RAM issues or issues with RAM, as you guys may recall from some previous videos. And I finally got that resolved and was able to continue with the testing. And then also I had the failure with the NVMe drive, which could have potentially had something to do with it. But what's interesting is between all of these or those two problems, the transfer speeds actually was pretty consistent between both the first 10 runs and the last 12 runs. And technically uh, runs one and two that you'll see are actually runs 11 and 12. Those I just happened to be able to get or save somehow. I'm not really sure what happened there, but I do have those. So what you'll see in the sample output from run zero is the OVO cable tray final.mom file being transferred over, and you're seeing anywhere between 129 megabytes to 135 megabytes per second. Basically, every CSV file looked identical to this, and then what I ended up doing was averaging the results of each run inside, or each transfer inside of those runs, in order to get a pretty good idea of what we were looking at. So as you can see here in the results, in run one, we had an average transfer speed of 142 megabytes per second and an average secure copy time or completion time of five minutes and 45 seconds, which is honestly pretty good considering it was a 48 gigabyte file. And remember that happened between 40, 40 to 51 times or 52 times, whatever I said earlier. <laughs> and you know, that's actually pretty good, I would say for an average. Now what's interesting here is that it seems to slow down after we removed the drive from run two, the bad drive from run two. But in all reality, I think runs three through 12 is actually more closely represented to what I was seeing when I was actually doing all 22 runs. Now the only reason why I stopped at 22 runs is because basically after the 22nd run, I already transferred about 42,000 terabytes of data in between two to three weeks. So I didn't really see the point of continuing on because I feel like I had enough data um, with all the testing I did. Now, one of the other things I wanna mention here with these results is that the parity check speed may or may not actually be affected when an SSD can or cannot perform trim. But remember, trim is not supported in array devices. So technically, I should see something 
whether it be in the transfer speed or with the parity check, but I just don't think I am. So take it with a grain of salt. Parity check may not be affected uh, if an SSD cannot trim itself or clean itself, basically. And I went ahead and logged all the parity check times too uh, from each consecutive run because I felt like that might be important data. And so on that note, I'm just gonna go ahead and let you guys look at some pretty charts for a moment. And um, there's not really much that needs to be said, so have fun. So hopefully we didn't go through those charts too quickly, but again, there's links in the video description below for all of that information, including access to the CSV files, should you want to parse through those yourself manually. Now, one of the things I wanted to try after doing all these tests was actually trying to see if manually performing trim on those devices, if the speed would improve, the transfer speed would improve at all. And so in order to do that, I actually had to unassign all of those devices from the array and assign them as cache devices. And then once they were assigned as cache, I simply ran the command FS trim and that manually kicked off the trimming of those devices. And it appeared to do something, although I'm not entirely sure what it possibly could have cleared because I actually deleted all of the data before making those cache de devices. And I think they were formatted anyway, but apparently uh, trim did clear some, some blocks of data, but I'm not sure if that's true or not because I'm not an architect engineer, but that's besides the point. So once that finished, I went ahead and took those same cache devices, assigned them back into the array, reran the test, and lo and behold, nearly the same identical results. Now what's most interesting about this is that when we did the test from the MacBook Pro over to PNAS, it was significantly faster than 135 megabytes per second. So that leaves a lot of headroom on the table and I'm not entirely sure why. So I decided that maybe I should try changing the NICs out and so I took one of the Intel X520 NICs and replaced it with the Action uh, AQC107 or whatever, whatever it's called. And I reran the test again and got the same exact results. I double checked to make sure MTU was enabled and Jumbo Frames was enabled on all the three devices, even though it's not technically called that on the Switch. And everything looked like it checked out fine. And what's actually another interesting point to make is originally when we did this test with the MacBook Pro 2 PNAS, MTU wasn't set to 9,000 on that server. So I should have gotten really quick speeds, but for some reason I wasn't really seeing that. So if you made it this far, I guess we'll talk about some other things like why I'm actually doing this test. Well, again, I was very curious and wanted to see some actual real results besides people just saying, hey, you shouldn't do this. It's a bad idea because trim isn't supported. That wasn't good enough for me and I wanted to see some real world tangible information. Now that's pretty much how this whole concept came about. Now, if you actually want to do this or have SSD in your, your array, apparently you can. And I never once in all this testing saw anything that I would consider performance degradation, but I don't. not all SSDs are built the same and that's really where the potential for failure is. So you can do it, but you shouldn't. And if performance is your goal, then you're not doing this right in the first place. If you wanna see some real performance, make a RAID 10 or RAID 0 array of any SSDs you have. If you only have two, that's a RAID 0. RAID 1's fine, most SSDs perform pretty quick. NVMe SSDs are obviously even faster, but if you want, again, the full potential performance you can get, RAID 0 is the way to go. And if you want a little bit of extra redundancy, then a RAID 1 it, or a RAID 10 would be ideal as well, but you'll need four drives for that at a minimum. Anyway, uh, so I don't really know what else there is to talk about with this. Um, again, if you guys have any more questions, I highly recommend going to the website and checking out all the information that I've laid out there for you because I think that will answer most questions. Now, I do kind of want to make a part three of this because I'm really curious to see what the difference is between TLC drives or QVL drives, T QLV, whatever, the really cheap drives versus something like an MLC drive. Now, as far as I know, the only thing that I could potentially afford are a Samsung MLC SSD, 
but those are still really expensive on their own, especially four of them. And I feel like four is a good number to have for this testing. So just, you know, four one terabyte Samsung 970 Pros is maybe $600. And that's a lot to swallow, especially for just a test that I'm gonna do once. And I honestly don't know what I would do with those drives after I did this test. So there may not be a part three. There may be a part three. I just don't know, unfortunately. But nonetheless, it would be really interesting to see what happens uh, between the two different types of architectures uh, from those devices. And well, that pretty much sums up this entire video. There's nothing else I can think of that needs to be said. So I just wanna thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.